Hello everyone and welcome to my video blog. You know, I've had a lot of time to think about the the things that were said with the Jenna Telekova case and I think that where we need to go now is to inform the media and inform them about the best ways to speak, uh, speak to and to interview transgender people. You know, so I want to offer them some tips because if someone as large of an entity as Barbara Walters can't get it right, imagine everyone else. So what I want to say first and foremost is that if you're gonna interview a transgender person, you need to do your research first. Do your research about the process, about the terminology used, all of those things. That will alleviate a lot of problems. Um, and even if you feel that your audience doesn't know some of the things that you've learned, mention that um, because it will seem like the interview is coming from a heartfelt place. It's coming from a place where we know in the community that you tried your best to figure out what was happening in this person's life. Um, second, it's imperative for you to remember that transgender people are indeed human. They are indeed human beings. They are just like you and I. We just happen to have another experience to be who you see in front of you. And the other tip is to concentrate on who you see in front of you. The problem that we had with the Barbara Walters interview is that she kept going back at the beginning of this person's life. You know, you can talk about that briefly but no one needs all the great details we don't need to know any specifics about individuals and their exact surgeries and um, you know constantly referring to them to their name before they transition all of those things are ex exceedingly inappropriate um, because the person that you see in front of you is the person that the world knows it's the person that either their family had to deal with um, after a while, whether they um, approved or not, um, that is the person that they are projecting to the world, not how they were born, okay? And that's really, really, really important. And I think that is one of the reasons why many of my trans sisters in particular have such a hard time in these interviews because you're concentrating on somebody that they were. For those of us who transition in our early 20s, we're going to live an entire life um, as our chosen or who we were meant to be, um, gender identity. So therefore, we live longer as the gender that we were not born than the gender that we were born. So therefore, to continue to talk about and use terms as man and um, boy and stuff like that, we cannot relate to those terms too much because we're not living that way. We haven't. And that's not who we are, which is why we transitioned in the first place. So I think that's really, really imperative for media, um, um, journalists, uh, anyone who's interviewing someone of trans experience. To realize it is just indeed that in indeed that it's an experience the person is who they are now how did they get there why did you get there those are the questions that everyone really wants to know um, how old were you when you came to the understanding about yourself put yourself in that person's shoes if you don't do that the entire interview is going to look like you are um, attacking them or trying to sensationalize their experience. Um, let's see, another thing that was, um, that really got most of us was the opening to the entire um, Jenna Telekova interview um, where she just, Barbara Walters mentioned, no one has had more surgery than this person you know, all of this sort of thing is, is sensationalizing her and making her seem as if she's just this weirdo or a freak of nature. And, you know, um, you already had that feel from the very beginning 
it made most people a little tense including myself, including some of my um, friends and colleagues who were just like, you know, one of my good um, associates, she said, the minute I heard that, I wanted to just turn it off because you already knew what the rest of the um, story was going to be like. So again, if you're not someone who's trying to sensationalize the experiences of transgender people, there is a way to talk about it with respect. There is a way to have interviews that are magnificent and to write articles that are great. Um, I think my one of the best articles ever written about my life had to have been, um, I want to say 2005 or six, and it was with a woman by the name of Gretchen Duckowitz. And I knew instantaneously when I talked to her on the phone that she wanted to make sure that she did not portray me in any light other than who I was. Um, and I really respected that. And she said, you know, you're just like I am. You're just like anyone else, but you had a different experience. And so what I want to do is encourage people to follow who you are now. And that was one of my first major um, interviews. And that was with the Advocate magazine. Um, that woman, she's a freelancer. I don't think she's like on their staff, but she's a freelancer. And so she ended up giving the story to them and they put it in the magazine. Um, and it was just very well done. It was very tastefully done. Um, and I, I think it's one of the best I've ever had. It was one of the, the interviews where I felt like this person really didn't even want to talk necessarily about the transition itself at all. They wanted to know about you know, where am I performing? What was my education? How do I feel about different things? And ever since then, it was the model that I used whenever I talked to someone else. And, and I also can feel very quickly in an interview if someone is not on that same level of thought, you know quickly, you need to try to figure out where is this trying to go? Do you need to continue with this interview? and making it very clear and known to them what you're going to talk about and what you're not going to talk about. All of those things are, ex are, ex are very, very important. So that's something else to think about. You know, I calmed down after the last one and I really, really thought about it. And I said, what we need is a handbook. We need some sort of videos to let people know what is appropriate because obviously no one knows or even if they do know there hasn't been enough backlash for them to care and until we all stand up and say look enough is enough this is what I'm going to talk about this is ridiculous unless you're willing to talk about the same subjects um, then it doesn't make any sense to continue to talk about someone's genitals or to talk about you know, something that they were so many years prior. Um, many of you who have, you know, who are in various careers, many of you are not the same person you were in your teens, in your early 20s. When you develop into an adult, you've had changes. You've done different things. And um, really, that's what it feels like for us. It feels like that's who I was. This is who I am. Okay, um, it's a small part of the individual. It's a small part of the whole that is that person, whether it's a she or a he, whether it's a gender queer individual, um, gender nonconformist. There's so many different terms, but and again, you need to learn what those are, because you could be talking to someone and assuming that they feel a certain way. The other thing that's interesting is that most reporters don't understand that you don't end up having surgeries or you're not who you are based on your sexuality. That's really, really hard for them to get. There are so many assumptions. Someone who transitions from male to female should like females or should like men, where our community is just as diverse and different as yours is. So therefore, there are people that have different attractions who um, have various sexual orientations um, and there's nothing wrong with it. That's just who they are. 
There are some people that don't feel that they need to have any surgeries. There are some people that feel they had to have a number of them so that they could look into the mirror and feel good with what they saw. And I think that we should respect that. We should respect that it's a personal decision and that's it. We also sh should respect some of their privacy, for heaven's sake. Um, because no celebrity or no anyone who is just having an interview wants to tell you all of their business. It's your job to get down to the truth. I agree. But there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it that's tactful and respectful. And when you cross those lines into disrespectful, that's when I have a problem. And I really have a problem when it comes down to other trans men and women. Because I know what I went through when I came out. Um, a lot of people don't know that in Virginia, when I came out, I was in about three or four publications because they sold the story. Or, or it would be a paper that was affiliated with another story. So I would walk down the street and look to the left and there was my face plastered on some cover of some magazine or some newspaper. It's very frightening because you don't know how people are going to react. You can look at the comments below and see how ignorant some people are. Um, but thankfully, because I've had such a positive career and I do a lot, I do a lot of volunteer work, um, perform all around the world, um, there wasn't much that people could say besides trying to attack me for my decision and being who I am, you know, and that's to each his own, everyone has their own opinion. But I know what that feels like. And so when I see other people put their whole lives out there and only thing they're asking you to do is to use some tact and respect to portray them in a positive way, to showcase them for who they are today we can talk about the past someone could go to jail someone could have been um, a drug addict someone could have been um, anorexic someone could have been a number of different things in their life and they want to share that to help other people and that's what we're doing we're sharing our experiences because there's a general belief that there's no one out there like us and there's lots of people that are like us in fact there are more people that we will never know that were or are like us because there's no way of really, really, really knowing how many trans people there are in this world. Census is never going to be able to get down to the bottom of it. <laughs> no. So we need to respect those who are coming, um, not coming, I'm sorry, for those who are being upfront with, this is who I am, now here's how I want to help. Here is an example of discrimination. Um, I just read another article about a young lady who, um, a married couple actually, who had to fight to get their um, insurance. I um, know uh, the insurance company sued, tried to take the lady's insurance privileges away, and um, she had to go to court and she won um, because she had had. Her, her um, post-op surgery right before she got married um, and when the insurance company found that out they wanted to take away her medical insurance this isn't the first time we've seen this in the media I don't know if you guys remember the other woman who her husband was killed um, in an accident and the parents came and he had left her some money and the parents came and took the money took the house took the kids you know, this is the reality for a lot of us. You know, you're just trying to live your life fully and completely um, sharing it with someone else um, and you have some foolishness. So that is one of the reasons why many of us are, are coming out and saying, look, here's the face of someone who is indeed transgender, who is indeed a professional, who is indeed a tax paying citizen, yada, 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 yada. Let's stop the foolishness. You know, that's why people are coming out. It's not because people just want to be famous. Because you're not going to be famous just coming out and saying that you're transgender. Um, so that's foolish to think. But this young lady, um, Jenna, Jenna is, um, she's a gem because she went into this and she never looked back. She said, look, 
this is who I am, period. Now, just like I say about myself, you can call me any kind of thing. You can say I'm unattractive, all, all kinds of stuff I could care less about. But you can't take my talent away. You can't take the fact that, uh, um, that I've sung for the President of the United States. You can't take away the fact that I'm also a violinist, you know, that I'm very respected in my career path. You can't take those things away. You can say whatever you want to. doesn't matter. My bill's still paid. So, <laughs> so, you know, I don't care. And that's one of the reasons why I'm willing to speak so frankly and openly about my life to help others and also to encourage my young sisters and brothers out there that you can do it. You don't have to listen to anyone else. You go for it. And that is why we need to continue to fight for the rights of those who have been discriminated against. And, um, you know, so that's just my two cents. I probably will do another video um, about some other little tips that people should be aware of so that, you know, I don't think everybody wants to offend us um, when they give us an interview. And of course, they have a job to do as well. Um, one of the things that I tweet about often is that, you know, I've had some amazing journalists who had the greatest of intent just to have their um, their stories changed by the editor. I've taken some amazing photos, but the only photos that the editors wanted to show were the ones that were the worst. It's it's about selling. It's about selling newspapers. It's about selling um, articles. It's about selling you know, getting more ratings. It's about all those things. And it's time for us to stand up and say, okay, we need to stop this. Okay. We need to stop it. We need to stop the foolishness. We need to stop allowing people like Barbara Walters and others who interview us to talk to us any kind of way and treat us any kind of way. If we don't stand up for ourselves, then who else is going to stand up for us? No one. Um, and if we don't encourage those who are speaking on our behalf, then we're not going to have anyone that speaks on our behalf. <laughs> so um, it's very, very simple. So I hope that this is helpful to some. I apologize for um, losing my temper and actually cursing. And the last one, I don't normally curse too much. Um, you know, I'm human. I mean, oh, hell. <laughs> you know, but um, enough is enough. And I was furious to see what I saw. And that was just my reaction to it. And I don't apologize to it. I still think that the interview was tacky. I think that there is some great that's going to come out of it because of Jenna, the woman that she is, and her family for being very supportive, and the fact that she's being so open. And I applaud her for it, and I applaud anyone else who does the same. So thank you all very much. Again, this is Tona Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Tenacity or T-O-N-A-C-I-T-Y. Also, my website is TonaBrown.com. Feel free to follow me on, um, on my website, see the things that I do. I'm also on Facebook, so you can always look me up, Tona Brown. And I hope to talk to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you, girls, for being having my back um, in some of those videos. Um, where you can see the people trying to attack me or Jenna. So thank you guys so much. I love you all. God bless.